There are 8 million people in Zambia. Like many Central African countries, life is hard and the economy is in turmoil. But Zambians have one thread that binds all their different tribes together. We wrap up little boys, tennis boys. Uh, it has no tribe on it. It's a uh, you know, small ball and it bounces all over and that brings us uh, together. You could say that Zambia was born a sporting nation. They gained their independence from Britain in 1964 in the middle of the Tokyo Olympics. Their first president, Kenneth Kaunda, is a great sports fan and used to promote soccer above all. Indeed, the national soccer team used to be named the KK11 in his honor. I simply love the game myself. The people love the game. When we are together uh, at this independent stadium, as we call it, um, the unity of the nation uh, is there, you can feel it. So it's really, it's, um, it's in the blood of almost every, every Zambian. With such support, Zambia swiftly established themselves as one of the best teams on the continent. In 1973, they reached the final group of three in the African qualifiers. But defeat at home to Zaire put pay to their chances of reaching their first finals. By the late 1980s, Zambian soccer was once again among the best. And at the Olympics in Seoul, they achieved one of Africa's most remarkable results. In a group match against a near full-strength Italy, Zambia won 4-0. Three goals were scored by Kalusha Bwalya and the other by his unrelated namesake, Johnston. Over the next four years, Kalusha and Johnston were joined by more exceptional players. Goalkeeper Efa Chabala, midfielder Eston Mulenga, goal scorers Timothy Umwitwa, Kelvin Mutale and Darby Makinka. At the start of the World Cup qualifiers, hopes were high that for the first time ever, Zambia would go to the finals. Which is why April the 28th, 1993, was the darkest day in the nation's history. I knew all those boys by name, first name. Uh, we had worked together for a long, long time. And uh, it was just indescribable. I uh, couldn't believe it at all. It was one of the saddest uh, days of, you know, my life. It was, uh, we lost uh, all we had. After I heard the, the news, on the, uh, I think it was half past 11, and um, 12 o'clock, from 12 to 6, the phone never stopped ringing, you know, and um, I didn't even have time to, you know, to, to think and cry and, and everything. But uh, I think about the boys all the time. On the northern side of Lusaka's independent stadium lie the graves of all 29 victims of the air crash off the coast of Gabon. 18 players died. No country has ever had to deal with a bigger blow to its national game. Yet to the Zambians, there was no option but to continue. Their death would be meaningless if we gave up. We don't give up in Zambia. They themselves, if it were possible to say, boys, how is it? They'll say, go. We have to go. We'll go on. The new Zambian squad received offers of help from all over the world. Denmark offered training facilities and the expertise of Roald Paulsen to assist coach Freddy Mwila. After five weeks together, the Zambians are back to resume their World Cup campaign against Morocco. Only three members of the old squad are still alive. As professionals in Europe, Kalusha Bwalya, Johnston Bwalya and Charles Musonda had been due to meet the other players in Senegal. The rest of the squad is recruited from Zambia's top clubs. And the day before the international, they take the opportunity to relax at a local first division match. Zambia's clubs have become a real force in Africa. In 1991, Power Dynamos in red won the African Cup Winners' Cup. 
but the crash struck a grievous blow to domestic football in Zambia. Dynamos alone lost five players. Match day. The Independence Stadium can only hold 35,000 people, and the fans gather over eight hours before kickoff. Inside the stadium, there's a desperate hope that the new team can beat Morocco and perhaps go on to qualify for the World Cup. President Chiluba is there to see if a miracle can be achieved. The new Zambians come out, led by captain Kalusha Bwalya. Kalusha, who plays for PSV Eindhoven in Holland, is the best player ever produced by Zambia. The only Zambian ever nominated African Footballer of the Year. And it's to him that the inexperienced players look for leadership. But, in addition to leadership, Zambia also need luck, and that is slower in arriving. Defender Linos Makwasa is knocked out after only 90 seconds, and the team need to reshuffle. Then, fate again favours the Moroccans. And after only 15 minutes, the unkindest cut of all. Rashid Daoudi puts the Moroccans in front, and a stern test of the young Zambian's skill and character lies ahead. With an hour gone, the Moroccan defence is holding firm. The Zambians need something special. A free kick is awarded outside the area and the responsibility falls to the captain. The Moroccans are now forced to defend frantically, and for the first time, Johnston Boilia unshackles himself from his markers. Ten weeks ago, Zambian soccer was shattered by the worst blow imaginable. Now they are three matches away from a true sporting miracle, World Cup qualification. Some Zambian, the Zambian team is gone, but you know, the Zambia, another team is, is back, you know, so yeah. I hope that we can, um, we can go all the way. Where's the two players?